Before we start using the SEM Fluidics Flow Control Unit, it's important to know some basic concepts regarding hydraulics and fluid mechanics. These concepts will allow us to get the most out of our system and guarantee optimal results with high reproducibility on each experiment. To move a fluid through a canal, it is necessary to have a pushing force at one end of the canal or a pressure differential between both ends. The amount of liquid per unit of time leaving or entering the canal due to either of these forces is called flow. This motion is related not only to pressure, but also to hydraulic resistance. Let's see. When we increase the pressure differential in our system, the flow also rises. This means that they are proportionally related. However, the flow will decrease with a higher hydraulic resistance, meaning that these two are inversely proportional. Here, we show how the hydraulic resistance is generated by friction forces between the water and the surface of the canal. To better demonstrate how the length and the measurements of our tube affect the hydraulic resistance, we'll go over the following examples. First, let's consider a long tube and a small radius. Having a higher length and a small radius will result in a lower flow due to higher hydraulic resistance. On the other hand, with a tube of lower length and bigger radius, we will have a lower hydraulic resistance, which results in higher flow. These examples can also be represented by the equation shown, which states that the length is directly proportional to the resistance and the radius is inversely proportional to it. There's another factor called dynamic viscosity. This is a property of the fluid, and just like the length, it behaves directly proportional to the resistance. Even if the canal is rectangular, these properties still apply. The length and viscosity are directly proportional to the resistance and, instead of the radius, the height and the width are inversely proportional to the resistance. This means that a bigger height and width and a lower length and viscosity will result in higher flow, like we see on the left. Also, a lower height and width, along with higher longitude and viscosity, means that the flow will be reduced like we see on the right side of the screen. In both cases, we can see how the radius, or characteristic length, follows an inverse proportion to the fourth power. In other words, a small change in these dimensions greatly affects the hydraulic resistance. Keep this in mind as it may come in handy. In the case of a microfluidic system, we usually have several inputs and outputs connected in series. In this case, the total resistance is the sum of individual resistances for each tube of the microfluidic system. With these basic concepts, we are able to arrange any experimental setup and adjust its parameters to have a proper control, maximizing the system's stability.